Gospel Diaries, Episode 27, Rev. Stanley Keeble. Toward each of us, we pray and ask that you bless and anoint whatever taking place at this yes. century. Keep us, Lord, in perfect peace with our mind stayed on thee. We're grateful to Pastor Bryson for opening the door yes. for us to come in to this sanctuary and give praise and thanks to you one more time. Oh, yes. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Thank God. Amen. Amen. All right. What's up, Gospel Diaries? I'm at it again, and this time I feel like this is long overdue, but uh, I'm just glad and grateful that the opportunity has come. I'm sitting here with the one and only Reverend Stanley Keeble of Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, uh, <laughs> Willie Wells Southside Community Choir, the voices of triumph. Should I continue? Should I continue? I mean, my Lord, you know, this man here has really, really, you know, been an uh, uh, important part to the Chicago gospel community. Say hello to the people, Reverend. <laughs> hello, people. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I must say this. So I remember, you know, when you used to host the, the, the gospel brunch at Captain Hart. Yeah. <laughs> and you had so much order. Like, you just had everything just in order. I just, it was amazing just watching you, you know, MC that whole, you know, brunch. You remember those days? I remember those days explicitly because uh, I had a teacher. Mm -hmm. And my teacher was uh, my classroom at Calumet High School. I oh. taught at Calumet, and those children taught me an awful lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, look, we got, we got a lot to cover in, in a short amount of time. Okay. But uh, I think it's a great uh, segue to ask you, as a child, who was most influential musically in your life? Or that you can remember. As what as happened as was, uh, I uh, was going to uh, Sunday school at Zion Temple Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and Reverend F. D. Johnson was the pastor, and uh, the choir was celebrating its anniversary this particular year, and their organist was a lady. Her name was Mrs. Chapman. And the anthem that they were doing was so heavy, she couldn't play it on the organ. Mm -hmm. So she went and got on the piano. And in the middle of that song, Willie Webb got on the organ and played that anthem mm -hmm. without music in front of him, and I stood there like this. In front of him, and I stood there like this. <laughs> <laughs> I had never seen anybody play an anthem before it didn't have the music sitting in front of them. Mm -hmm. And if Willie Webb played that organ, so I followed Webb everywhere he went mm -hmm. because he was my inspiration wow. to play. To uh, revisit the legacy of Willie Webb. So I, let's talk about Willie Webb for a moment. Talk about Willie Webb. Uh, <laughs> Willie was so popular mm -hmm. during the early 50s here in Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. Every pastor was trying to get Willie Webb because Willie Webb was drawing more folks than the people. <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe his organ playing? Top notch, yeah. just two words, top notch. So he could do the anthems and the gospel stuff? E everything, mm -hmm. anything that could be played, Willie really Webb could play it. Wow. Uh, at that time, though, he was playing at Greater Harvest. Greater Harvest? Yeah. Reverend Body? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He was playing there, and I enjoyed it. I had started taking... And I guess I was about 13 or 14 by then, but I had started taking piano lessons at nine. Mm. And uh, I didn't, you know, care that much. They were trying to add culture to me, I mm. guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And uh, anyway, uh, 
he was going to uh, New Orleans for Bessie Griffin, because that's where Bessie Griffin is from, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, you want to go to New Orleans with me? I said, well, you can't ask me that. You have to ask my mama. Cause I called myself going out of town somewhere, and he said, no, no, I be dead, boy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so my mama let me go, mm -hmm. and I went to New Orleans with where? And folk in New Orleans act like folk in New York. You know, and in New York, when you go to Apollo, if you don't perform well, they're going to let you know. Oh, buddy. <laughs> They'll have a problem letting you know. Huh? Not at all. Uh, anyway, they uh, had Alex Bradford and the Bradford Singers on the show. In Louisiana? Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy. And Bradford was playing for himself because Gerald Spragans couldn't go. Mm -hmm. Uh Bradford said to me, Sammy, I'm going to start this song off, and when I get up to go sing, you can play. So Bradford got up, and I froze. Mm -hmm. I couldn't play a thing. I had never seen that many people before. Wow. <laughs> anyway, he came back to the piano and started again. He said, now, if you don't play this time, them folks going to mob your butt. Okay. <laughs> It was just tremendous. And that's how you met Willie Webb? Yeah. In Louisiana? No, I oh. met Webb. Oh, like he I sent said, you out there. In, yeah. in uh, yeah. Greater Harvest. He must have had some faith in you to you know, recommend you to go. Yeah. He had taken me somewhere and had me sit down and play the piano because he had never heard oh, me Oh, so he play. wanted to make sure for himself. Yeah, he wanted to make sure I knew what the hell I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, it turned out to be all right because uh, I had a good close friend and the Lord rest his spirit because Nathaniel was going on. Uh, he said, Webb said, you played your butt off in <laughs> Jesse Dixon came to Chicago to play at True Light Baptist Church. Paxton. Yeah. Okay. B.F. Paxton. And uh, he brought a fellow with him named Primus Pittman hmm. that he brought with him to help him train the choir because Pittman knew, you know, how to uh, give out the parts hmm. and so forth. And what had happened, uh, Jesse actually formed the Jesse Dixon Singers there at True Light. At True Light, oh. Yeah. And uh, I tell folks that I was Jesse's first musician, but actually Jesse Dixon was his own first <laughs> musician. He played himself till I came along. Mm -hmm. And then I played for him. What year did you start playing for Jesse? Do you remember? I don't remember. Was it the 60s? Yeah, early 60s. Early 60s. Uh, because uh, Inez came to Chicago in 57. And uh, when Inez first left the caravan, a boy out of... Uh, I think James Connolly is out of Arkansas. He was somewhere out of the South mm -hmm. that played for our nest for a short period of time. And then he moved to L.A., right? I don't know. Because I think James Connolly used to play with the Lord, with Harrison Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. But oh, anyway, okay. 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 Well, he could. Okay. Uh, anyway, when he left, I started playing for our nest. Mm -hmm. I played for her as a soloist, and then she organized the Andrewettes, and I played for the Andrewettes. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed, I think, playing for Inez more so than anybody I played for. And why is that? Huh? And why is that? Because Inez worked mostly in the South, Oh, okay, okay. 
and we had to stay in people's houses. We couldn't stay in the hotels back then. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Inez was constantly in prayer for me because she said, here this is a crazy boy from Chicago and these crazy white folks down south yeah. and he gets stopped by these crazy police. I got to pray this boy out of trouble. Wow. We're really getting some, uh, <laughs> some great insight from you, firsthand insight. So let me stop and tell you, man, I hope I don't be emotional. <laughs> get myself together because I'm not about to start crying. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, this is a joyous occasion. As yeah, long as yeah, they yeah, tears the yeah, joy, joy you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, oh man, I'm, I was just happy to be with you. Man. I'm so happy to be with you. Just explain your feelings uh, about the segregation in the South during the fifties and the sixties. Well, I was actually a part of it here in Chicago, mm -hmm. because we weren't all that integrated mm -hmm. back then ourselves here in the North. Because mm -hmm. most of the folk living in Chicago was like my mother and father came from the South. Mm -hmm. And so I had to deal with it. And, uh, you know, my first job working for some white folks, I made a dollar an hour. Uh, which meant I had a paycheck of forty dollars, mm. and I took home thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. I mean thirty-two, because mm -hmm. oh, they family. took out. <laughs> yeah, they took out eight dollars. <laughs> wow. uh, but uh, I lived well. I've never been hungry in my life. Mm -hmm. My mother always provided for me. And my mother worked at Sears and Roebuck. I was always able to wear nice clothes because she got an employee's discount. An employee's discount. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I went to uh, CVS High School. Mm -hmm. And when I went to CVS, because I graduated from elementary school in 51, when I went to CVS that September, it was only about 10 black kids in that whole school. Wow. And that school had the reputation of being the largest high school in all America. Really? Because at that time, have you been by CVS High School? What, are we talking about the vocation? Like yeah, right off of, uh, 87th in, Street. In Jeff all of that was the high school. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's why it had the reputation as being the largest school. Yeah, the vocational. They call it, now it's Chicago Vocational School, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, white uh, union, the plumbers, the electricians, and all of them, they ran that school. And it was very difficult for blacks to even get in there. In fact, back in the day, we didn't go east of Jeffrey. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I had a girl singing with me. She said, white folks had us thinking 63rd and Stony Island was the end of Chicago. <laughs> Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Because I'm blessed. I told them earlier 
I love the Lord because I was 10 years old and they had pushed my mother off in a room to die. And I, my grandmother woke me up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning praying to let her child live until her children got home. I was 10 years old. Bryce and I was 41 before Mama left in Jesus. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Reverend Keeble, give us a song. <laughs> Whatever comes to mind. I don't think I can make that reflect. Give me a G. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. I might not look like it or even sound like it, but I'm enjoying this to the highest. Come on. Boy, I, I, I ain't far from getting out this chair and go well, to shower. Watch out now. Watch out. Because I will, Come you on, know. Son. Watch out. <laughs> All right, Gospel Diaries, we're back. All right, so I'm going to read off this paper so okay. I get this right. All right, so the 50s is known as the golden age of gospel music, right? Yes. And the Davis Sisters, the war singers, and in Chicago, you had the Lux Singers, you had the Duckaneers, and so many more. And that era produced an unmatched style. And uh, you were right there participating, and more than likely, you, you were enjoying every moment of it. So let's talk about fellowship in the 50s. Talk about fellowship in the 50s. Uh, fellowship was one of the leading broadcast churches. Okay. I think the only churches that outranked fellowship was, of course, First Deliverance, because First Deliverance was the first church that aired gospel music all across the country because mm -hmm. the station they were on played everywhere mm -hmm. in America. And uh, the other one was, of course, Red and Body and Greater Harvest Baptist Church. So we fell in about number three, and I love that because that reminded me of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and, how, and how did you get to uh, Fellowship? Uh, Willie Webb. And you actually played at Fellowship every so How long did you stay? I stayed at Fellowship until I went on the road with Inez Andrew. And that was in, you said, in the 60s. Uh, so you were at Fellowship for over 10 years? Oh, Lord, yeah. Playing. And I, uh huh. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, Reverend Evans bought me a spinet piano. Because I was beating the grand piano to death because Willie Webb was playing the organ so loud, nobody could hear me. <laughs> but Willie Webb played that organ so loud, wow. and I wanted to be heard because wow. I could play. This is, this was definitely a, a common, comical uh, moment. Wow, Reverend Evans bought you your own piano. Yeah. Now, did he, did he have a note on there, Stanley Keeble only? <laughs> no. <Okay. laughs> so he allowed other people to play it too, okay. Uh, Reverend Evans <laughs> had to contend with a lot of uh, things that were not regular. Like, I wasn't a regular musician. I was a piano-banging person. And we had a meeting one Sunday, 
because he wanted to talk about all the negative things. Because Cassetta George, who sang with the cabins, yeah. belonged to Fellowship. Okay. And every wow, time she okay. sang at Fellowship, they couldn't sit Cassetta down. Cassetta would sing 10 and 15 minutes, <laughs> and everybody else sang 4 or 5. Oh, wow. <laughs> hmm. But I remember um, the radio station in Memphis, WDAI, WIAD, or something like that. Okay. And they had Reverend Evans on. And I, by myself, went to play for Reverend Evans. Uh, and Napoleon Brown, he was an albino fella that played for Cleophus Robinson and his sister. Why am I treated so bad? <laughs> anyway, uh, Napoleon came back in because he had gone outside. He said, Stanley. I said, what? And they pulled him. He said, the folks from the newspaper here want to know how you spell your last name. They said, because anybody playing an organ like you played that organ, they don't want to misspell your name. <laughs> Uh, there was a great singer here in Chicago. Her name was Princess Stewart. Wow, Princess okay. Stewart was blind. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. She heard me play at a church one Sunday, and she said, I think I might let you play for me. She said, but you have to come to my house. Mm -hmm. So I went to her house because she had to go somewhere and sing that Sunday afternoon. And I walked in her house. And she walked up to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you look all right. <laughs> okay. She knew. Yeah, she could tell what I had on by just feeling. Discipline. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's six cents. Mm-hmm. If we discipline brings about a yeah, change your life if you get some discipline, huh? Of course. Of what course. what Hayes used to say, change your thinking. What is it what was change it? Changing your thinking, you'll change your attitude. Mm-hmm. That means a lot. Thompson Community Singers, right? That's but, why Webb started. But, but, but Reverend Keeble, I find it quite interesting that Reverend Milton Bronson was actually a lead singer at Fellowship, too. Mm -hmm. He joined Fellowship. Right. He, uh, he knew... Uh, Reverend Thompson, that's how they got the name the Thompson Community right. Singing. Eugene Thompson, because right. the pastor's name was Thompson, oh. where he rehearsed his choir. He and Dolores Chandler started the choir in Hay in Crane High School. Wow. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So so the West Side had the Thompson Community Singers and then the South Side had the Southside South Community South. Choir. So we had people like Woodrow Walker. Singing Negro. My God, that boy could sing. Pastor Isaac Whitman. Yeah. Doing he, sights. Let me tell you about <laughs> Doris Sight. <laughs> we went, the first time I ever went to C.L. Franklin's church in Detroit, mm -hmm. they had the Southside Community Choir on that program. Dar Sykes was the directress for yes. the choir. Dar was directing the choir, and she brought the choir down real low. And she walked out of the choir, standing down to the first row, because she had a purse mm -hmm. in a seat on the first row, went in her purse, got her handkerchief, and was dabbing the sweat off her face and slung her hand up and then Southside Community Choir blasted, pack it up, because we were singing, packing up, getting ready to go. <laughs> and then we got slung in there <laughs> and told that church all the peace. <laughs> my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I came along with some great folk. 
You did. Yeah. Now, again, with the South Carolina Community Choir, um, now I found a recording from Webb, but it says his famous choir. But can you clarify a bit? Did the South Side Community uh, Choir, did they ever record? Yeah. They did? Yeah. Okay. I just haven't been. Uh, Melvin before. Smothers sang something. I don't remember the name of the song. Mm -hmm. But uh, Melvin was a part of the uh, South Side Community Choir. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had fun talking about Willie Webb, the South Side Community uh, yeah. Choir. As and Webb well had a sister. Her name was Juanita Ludlow. And there was a group called the Ludlow Singers. Wait, so Ludlow sang with No, Whitman, he sang right? with Whitman's yeah, Choir, right. Preps of Faith. Yeah, Preps of Faith. the uh, Southern Community Choir. But he came back here and became a deacon. And this, he came, in other words, I say he came back home with that. Oh, wow. I've been in this life. I've been in this life. Song, I feel good. It's something about that <laughs> holler. My God, that's not that's some good. That, you know, I was reading. Uh, Thomas Dorsey has said that uh, he said that he tried to be different when he came over to the Christian world, to the gospel world. But he said he knew something was missing. He said something that he knew in the clubs was missing. Mm -hmm. He said that moan, that groan, mm -hmm. it was missing mm -hmm. because it speaks something. You know what I mean? And you. Got it. You know, you just, you know how to skip down in the soul. Because he said the people did, they reacted the same way in the club how they, they reacted in the church. church. Mm -hmm. When you moan and groan, because when you connect <laughs> to something, you feel it. You can't, it's, you, you just feel it. Um, was playing everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> and when he got into the clubs, <laughs> the children would get up and shout, oh, happy day, oh, happy day. <laughs> and that's the reason that changed the whole dynamics of the right. gospel music industry. Right, right. Wow. He was the first crossover. Wow. Yeah. All right, so Reverend Keeble. So, um, so of course, you had Roberta Martin and Sally Martin in the publishing house. We don't really talk about, you know, the importance of the black publishing houses uh, in Chicago. But, however, I want to ask you, did you ever compose any songs for the two? No? So, do, do you remember when you composed your first song or copy, copyright your first song? When was the copyright? I don't remember. What was your first song? Uh -oh, Let me you see your <laughs> CD there. Cause I'm old and I've been sick, baby. I don't remember like I used to. You remember now. <laughs> hmm? You remember <laughs> now. <laughs> I tell you that. Uh, I did write Can't You Love Him. Right. Yes, you did. And I wrote I Want to Belong to Him. Mm -hmm. I wrote Meeting in the Sky, and I wrote He Brought Me. I got What Do You Want My Lord to Say from uh, Marvin Yancey. And Kevin wrote He Remains the Same. And I wrote If You Don't Stay Long. And that's it. Mm. The rest of that stuff, somebody else wrote. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, let me ask you, now, before we go to the Voices of Triumph, did you play... Would any other record for any other group besides uh, the uh, choir or your choir, uh, the West Side Choir? Did you record for any other groups in Chicago? I played for most of the quartets in Chicago. So, I'm playing the organ. Know, you playing organ? Mm -hmm. You recording with the quartets too? Mm -hmm. Name some of them. Chicago Travelers. The Overcoming Four, and uh, who else room in Burton? Oh, the Victory Traveler. Victory Traveler. You recorded with them, huh? Mm -hmm. I recorded most of the uh, quartets in Chicago. 
Mm-hmm. That's a good, good to know. Now let's talk about the Voices of Triumph. How did you organize that choir? Uh, I was at Fellowship one night because there was a musical going on. And they called on this choir to sing. And uh, they only had a pianist. So I ended up playing for that choir. And the choir was the Treadwell Community Choir. Oh, wow. I was the Treadwell's first organist. Because Bill wanted me to come and play for them <laughs> at the rehearsal since I played for them that night at Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Because his wife could spank that PM. That spank. Could spank. They, still together, they both did. I'm talking oh, wow. about the Treadwell Saints. Mm -mm. They not together now? Mm -mm. His oldest son didn't change the name of the church. He gone a different route, but so much for that. Uh, but let me tell you about Willie Ware. Uh We had a program one night at the church in Robin, and I didn't play. Because a boy named Alfred Sewell did some playing and somebody else did some playing. And uh, to show you how crazy I was, I didn't play at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm riding with Willie Webb. Wow. After the program was over and we got in the car, Webb said to me, this car got one more time to go somewhere and you refuse to play, and I'm gonna knock your damn head off. And the mm. first time I had ever heard Webb cuss, scared me to death, <laughs> cause I thought he would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wanted to give those other fellas an opportunity to see what it was like to play for an outstanding choir. Mm. Well, that Southside could sing the asses off. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. But back to, to the voices of Triumph, um, who, who is playing uh, on the organ, Washed in the Blood? Who is that on the organ? Do Marvin. Marvin. This dude is weighing out that organ. Marvin can play his ass off. <laughs> he could. Marvin. And he loved. And that's why I'm upset with me because I can't remember what I did with this stuff. I recorded for Hal Freeman from Friendship Baptist you Church. You talking about Righteous Records? Huh? You talking about Righteous Records? Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one you it, did. Uh, I, um, uh, washed in the Blood washed and, in the I, blood, feel and I Feel Good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, too, too <laughs> well, look, we're on our way to First Church. Of the, this is about to be real historical. Uh, we're on our way to First Church of Deliverance, and we're going to hear from the legend himself, Reverend Stanley King. <laughs> Hello, Gospel Diaries. If you would like to help and support to keep this content going, please follow the instructions on the screen and so into Gospel Diary so we can continue to bring you this great content because I love doing it, but I need your help. Lord, give me strength. Oh.